Welcome back to Midpoint. The chairman and founder of Identity Theft 911, Adam Levin. And we're joined now by the author of Identity Theft Alert, attorney and professor at Bentley University, Stephen Weissman. All right, gentlemen, let's get right to it. Stephen, I'm going to bring you into this because we just talked the last segment about the cybersecurity bill, the fact that we're all still waiting for things to get done. We're so far behind the curve at this point. But Adam has brought up the legal side of things because there's people saying, wait a minute, I still have free speech. I can say whatever I want. Cybersecurity can't get involved in what I I do in my daily life all right legal side of things can they you know there are limits first of all when you're talking about say social media being used by uh, ISIS uh, the First Amendment protects you from government interference with your rights of freedom of speech so private companies like uh, YouTube, uh, like Twitter, uh, like Facebook, they can have and do have their own regulations when it comes to uh, permitting the kind of abominations that we have seen. So they legitimately can limit that. Isn't when that written right there in terms and conditions? Every time you sign on, you've got to check that box. Absolutely. And, you know, there's the other thing about, you know, there are limits on free speech. The proverbial, if it's going to, you can't yell fire in the crowded theater, you can't incite violence. So the kind of legislation that we're talking about for cybersecurity uh, is something that there, do, there, there does have to be certain privacy protections built in. Actually, even with some of the sharing, there's going to be having to work out some antitrust issues. But we have to do it. I was listening to Adam at the tail end of the the section and I, I could not agree with him more. We are beyond serious. We're at a place now where just recently a steel plant in Germany was set on fire remotely by cyber terrorists. This is really serious stuff and it is not overreacting to say we need some legislation and we need it now. Adam, let me ask you as far as social media is concerned here, because we've got ISIS and Twitter now in a little bit of a battle, and Twitter basically knocking out some ISIS tweets to see if they can keep the terrorism level down. But what about YouTube? What about all these other social medias? Because it seems as if these videos are out there in seconds from when the terrorists put it up, and it seems to me as if we're walking into a time in life when maybe somebody's going to have to review all of these videos and look at them before they upload them, and they will have the legal right to do that, to basically say no and stop them. Well, I think there is, there is a movement afoot, and you may see it with Twitter today, but I believe you'll see it with other organizations uh, in the future. And that is, there are certain things that we just can't help to get out there. It's just, it's too dangerous for everyone. The stakes are, are way too high. And, and I agree with the professor. I mean, there is free speech, and then there is free speech on steroids perverted uh, to uh, further the interests of people who frankly have anything but the concept of promoting free speech on their mind. Professor. And, and, and I think we're, we're going to see a much tougher attitude toward that in the future and I hope sooner rather than later, especially when you're dealing with these horrendous acts of cruelty that are being broadcast. Professor, i got about 60 seconds left here. Are we not, though, working into a new time of legalese where we're all going to challenge a lot of these free speech issues, social media, what we can, what we can't, and what you are and are not allowed to put out there? It's going to happen. It's happening now. It is happening, and unfortunately what we're seeing is what we always see, which is technology going further than the law, and the law always having to play catch-up. You know, we had situations when it dealt with copyright infringements on websites like YouTube that were sued for putting up copyrighted material music, and so there were safe harbors for them trying to do their best to take these things down, but are we going to have to have some better screening initially done to capture these types of abominations before they get up there, I think we do. All right, and there is a big difference, as you pointed out, which we can talk about another time, with this whole free speech argument, which everybody is real easy to say, it becomes the knee-jerk, but there's a big difference here when it comes down to putting stuff like this out and actually having free speech. You mentioned the government as well, and we could spend days on this as well. Gentlemen, we're all out of time on this one. Stephen Weissman from Scamicide.com. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Adam Levin, Identity Theft 911, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Ed. All right, take care, gentlemen. When we come back, it is a time to go to that one place, that special place, but also a special time because someone noticed what we're doing here. We'll tell you right here on Midpoint.